Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel and hello to any new viewers. Today what we're going to look at electricity usage and we'll look at it in three areas. Number one, household appliances. Number two, workshop appliances. And number three then we'll have a brief look at car charging as well. As time has gone by and particularly with the last eight or nine months, uh, it's October 2022 20, now as we're, I'm recording this video. Uh, electricity prices have doubled uh, for me anyway and um, my own electricity supplier has raised prices three times in the last eight or nine months and I'm paying double what I'm paid what I paid this time last year so it's a sort of a pertinent subject that might be able to save you a few um, euros or dollars or whatever currency um, you're denominated in as I said we look at it in three areas household appliances workshop appliances and car charging and we'll sort of focus on two areas number one the bigger users of electricity and um, that you might not have on for too long and then secondly the longer users of electricity which you might have on all day such as lighting or something like that now basically electricity is charged per kilowatt hour commonly known as a unit of electricity and what a kilowatt hour is is a thousand watts of, a, of electricity usage for a period of one hour kilowatt being a thousand watts so if we have an appliance that's using 500 watts and we keep that appliance on for a period of two hours that will use one kilowatt hour of electricity or a thousand watt hours of electricity uh, similarly enough if you have a four kilowatt appliance and you keep it on for a quarter of an hour and um, you're still using one kilowatt hour of electricity so that's our our measure and that's what we measure appliance usage in and that's also what we're charged in from an electricity supplier point of view now we'll start off at household appliances and to demonstrate this, we'll make some tea and toast. Now, when it comes to establishing the energy use by any appliance, under EU legislation, every appliance must have an energy label which shows how much electricity it uses under normal operating conditions. For example, here we have the one from the bottom of the kettle. It's a T-Fal kettle, and it shows us that it's between 2,500 and 3,000 watts whilst it's operational. Um, Similarly enough, uh, we can see here with the toaster that the toaster ranges between 870 through to 1,030 watts uh, while it's operational as well. So what we'll do is we'll stick a litre of water in the kettle, which is about two pints or maybe about six cups thereabouts, four cups. And we'll stick two slices of toast in the toaster and we'll set these operating. So what we can see there as we progress is that the kettle takes four minutes um, to boil one litre of water and the toaster takes 2.5 minutes approximately um, to toast the two slices of bread. So that's our energy use. And what we'll do now is we'll stick up a, a sort of a formula there for calculating how much electricity we've used and then we'll multiply it by our unit cost, which at the moment for me is 46 cents a unit. And then that indicates to us then how much our tea and toast would actually cost. Now, if you don't feel like uh, calculating out as per the energy label on the appliance, what you can always get is uh, an energy monitoring socket or type of meter, such as this one in the picture. Um, where this would be particularly valuable is where you're trying to measure standby power when something isn't actually fully operational, but just sitting there waiting to be used. Now, where things to start to add up significantly is with the heavier electricity users. For example, a pumped electric shower is typically 8 to 9 kilowatts, which is 8,000 to 9,000 watts. So running a 9 kilowatt pumped electric shower for 5 minutes will cost roughly about 34.5 cents per use. That's uh, 9,000 watts multiplied by 5 minutes divided by 60 and then multiplied by our 46 cent uh, unit cost per kilowatt hour. And for example, if you have four in the family taking these showers, uh, this equates to 136 euros uh, per day, or alternatively, just over 500 euros per year. Uh, another heavy user which can stay on for long, longer periods of time is a household oven. These are typically anywhere between three and six kilowatts. And although the heating element does not stay on all the time, they can be significant users. Again, another heavy item uh, in terms of electricity usage are oil-filled radiators, which are generally used for much longer periods of time. And for example, they use a sort of a similar power to a kettle, but they stay on for much, much longer. Light bulbs are another area to watch, especially if you have older incandescent bulbs still in use. This is a small halogen spotlight. And when we moved into our house in the kitchen living area, there were 25 of these on three different circuits. 
Um, these were using 50 watts each, and if all three circuits are switched on with these older type bulbs, they consumed 1,250 watts per hour, which with today's electricity prices uh, would equate to about 60 cents an hour to run. During the winter, when these lights were on from early in the evening to bedtime, we could be looking at five hours of runtime, effectively costing three euros a night or 90 euros per month just for these lights. We've replaced all of these old halogen units with LED units then, which consume about five watts each, basically reducing the electricity consumption and cost tenfold. Uh, LED bulbs have come a long way in terms of light output, colour temperature and light dispersion since they were introduced. So there's really no reason not to get them at this stage. They will be more expensive to buy, but at a running cost of one tenth of incandescent bulbs or halogens, they'll pay back very, very quickly. In the workshop, the big users will be lighting and electric motors generally. For example, when I converted this shed from a milking parlour into a workshop, there were five double fluorescent tube fittings, which were five foot long, and they were using 55 watts per tube, consuming in total about 550 watts per hour. This today would obviously cost 25 cents per hour to run, or 250 a day for a typical 10 hour day. Fluorescent tubes used to be pretty good energy-wise compared to traditional tungsten filament uh, in normal light bulbs, but the new LED units run at about half of that consumption again. They also have a much longer life and uh, they do appear to be way brighter. Additionally, there's no messing around with transformers or starters, so overall they're easier to manage. One thing I've started to do recently is to turn off the lights anytime I'm not using the workshop rather than switching them on first thing in the morning and then leaving them on for the full day. I, I also intend to split the light fittings into a number of circuits as if I'm only in and out getting tools for repair outside or whatever. I don't need to keep the whole workshop lit all the time. It, it would be sufficient just to light up the tool area. Now the other big users in the workshop will be the motor driven equipment such as compressors, mills, lathes and welders. They can all pull quite a current. You may see some machines marked with horsepower ratings, um, generally speaking if they're older. This is relatively straightforward to convert as one horsepower is equivalent to 750 watts. So a two horsepower motor like a Bridgeport mill here will use 1500 watts of power while it's running. Now, one area to watch is the air compressor because if you're using very air hungry tools such as rotary equipment for cleaning or sanding or air powered scalers, like stuff like that, um, they're not an efficient way to work in that you're possibly running a three horsepower compressor motor to run a small air tool. Counterintuitive as it may seem, it might be the case that you might be better off getting a dedicated electric power tool to do the same work due to the wastage of air through the, through the tool itself. Now onto a much bigger consumption item, electric vehicles. This is a VW e-Golf and it has a 35 kilowatt hour battery pack. That equates to about 31 or 32 kilowatt hours of effective usable battery capability. The quoted range is 250 kilometers, but in real world terms, this probably equates to about 200 or 210 as you're not really going to run it down all the way to zero ever. And during the winter, the batteries don't operate as effectively as they do in the summer. So there is a level of reduced capability there. This is quite a low range model and electric cars move forward in terms of range. And roughly speaking, there has been three broad steps. The first, uh, similar enough to this car, was the sort of the 35 kilowatt hour battery pack. The next was around the 50 kilowatt hours. And a lot of electric cars now have somewhere between 75 and 80 kilowatt hour battery pack. So this pushes them more or less into the 500 kilometer or 300 mile range, which is becoming very usable. Now, in terms of cost to charge, it's a fairly simple calculation. 35 kilowatt hours of uh, battery capability multiplied by 46 cents uh, per unit during the day or 23 cents per unit during the nighttime hours, as I have a day night meter. This is the wall box that the car plugs into using a type 2 male female cable. That's the standard all across Europe. And the maximum output that the wall box will allow is 7.4 kilowatts, which results are, you know, should indicate a charge time of about five hours. Although again, in real world terms, the, the charging time will vary significantly as the battery is charged depending on temperature and battery health. This is important to watch as currently the night rate electricity here in Ireland is only available from 1am to 8am in wintertime and 2am to 9am in summertime. Uh, 
So we can fully charge our car during this time, but if we had a bigger battery pack, it would not be possible to fully charge the car. And either we'd have to partially charge the car over a number of nights, or alternatively run into daytime hours for some of the charging cycle, which would be more expensive. Now, it is possible to charge or to program the car to only totally charge between certain times, but do bear in mind that there'll be a bit of management or planning involved here to minimise your charging cost, especially with the new, newer vehicles with much bigger battery uh, packs on them. Additionally, as well, as smart meters are rolled out with the capability to record time of day usage, there will also be another bit of homework involved there in matching your individual um, car charging demands with a suitable billing profile from an energy supplier. So, uh, as I said, uh, a night, at a night time rate of 22.8 cents per kilowatt hour, this costs 7.98 or about 8 euros to charge if we can squash it into the night rate and 16 euros approximately if to do it uh, by day from empty to full. Um, in real world terms, you're probably not going to be charging it fully because um, you're not going to run it down to zero. But nevertheless, this will give you a good indication as to how much electricity it will consume charging. <laughs> 